The Pussycat Dolls' second and final album, Doll Domination, is an absolute holy grail of 2000s pop music. It may be more remembered for its singles nowadays, but the whole album is truly a time capsule of its era that deserves revisiting. Released in 2008, Doll Domination follows in the footsteps of the group's self-titled debut album, with a mixture of pop and R&B. However, since this was 2008, the album also incorporates more electronic and dance sounds. However, the album still retains the Dolls' signature brand of braggadociousness, and I mean that in the best possible way. If I had to describe it in one sentence, I'd say it feels like being two Red Bull vodkas in as you're partying in the VIP section of a high-end Hollywood club. The music and lyrical content give the album a sense of confidence and brashness. The most obvious example of this is the iconic lead single, When I Grow Up. The song's shameless and fame-hungry lyrics are definitely reflective of celebrity culture in the 2000s, but lead singer Nicole Scherzinger's powerful voice and performance elevated to be something of an empowerment anthem. It's so over-the-top and dramatic, which is what makes great and memorable pop music. And the song's hook is one of the most recognizable of the 2000s, who doesn't remember singing when I grow up, I want to be famous, I want to be a star, I want to be in movies to themselves at night while dancing with their Spongebob stuffed animals in front of the mirror. Alright, that may have just been me, but still, a timeless classic. On the other hand, the album's fourth single, I Hate This Part, is a stomping pop ballad that sees Nicole ending an unhappy relationship. Once again, the song is completely over the top and dramatic, especially in the bridge, which goes, I know you'll ask me to hold on and carry on like nothing's wrong, but there is no more time for lies because I see sunset in your eyes. I mean, damn, what the hell does sunset in your eyes even mean? The metaphorical end of the relationship, I guess? I don't know, but it's that kind of drama that really makes this album so much fun. While I'm sure we all remembered this album's singles, I also want to discuss some of the lesser known deep cuts. Whatchamacallit is a song that sees the girls, and by the girls I mean Nicole cause let's be real who the hell else was singing, showing off their untouchable style without dropping a single brand name, and instead saying they bought their outfits at Whatchamacallit. I love the implication that they just go shopping for luxury items so often that they don't even know what stores they bought everything at. The funniest line to me is, he wants to know who does my hair, clientele is so elite, I'm in love with his technique, he keeps me chic, they call him, uh-uh, the contact is under wraps, matter of fact, he's unavailable, don't need the traffic backed up when I go back to get my pretty on. The pettiness of this girl to not even tell other people who does her hair because she doesn't want to wait a little longer when she goes to the salon, I love it. And honestly, with all the brand name flexing that's been so prevalent in not just pop music, but pop culture in general, it's cool to have a song about having expensive taste without having a single name drop. Allegedly, there may have been plans to release the song as a single, and I wish it was because I would have loved to see a video for it. Another song I love is Magic, which is basically a song about being a gold digger. The song leans into the whole magic act theme, which makes it a fun campy bop in the vein of Love, Sex, Magic by Sierra. It's totally ridiculous and the lyrics are hilarious, but again, that's the point of the album. Moving on, we have Taken Over the World, which features some rarely heard vocals from Melody Thornton, who I guess wasn't being held hostage by Nicole while it was being recorded. The song is such a great pregame anthem, it's just chill enough to not necessarily be a club song, but it's just lit enough to dance along to while you're getting ready to go out or doing shots with your friends before the Uber comes. I particularly love the line, took over the club, so tonight we're gonna take over the world. That sounds like a pretty natural progression to me. I mean, going from shaking your ass to total world's domination makes sense in my book. Now one song that wasn't a deep cut, but is equally as ridiculous as the other songs I've discussed is Bottle Pop, featuring Snoop Dogg. I must have listened to the song hundreds of times by now, and I still do not get what the hell it is supposed to mean. All them other models bottling like mama's bottle tasty. If you pop my bottle, all them models gonna hate me. When my bottle pop, when my bottle pop, when my bottle pop, when my bottle pop shake me. What in the hell does that mean? 
Don't get me wrong, I love this song, but I don't think I'll ever understand what they were going for with this metaphor. Still, it's a fun, sexy bop with slinky and sparse production that's a great time as long as you don't give too much thought to it. Speaking of metaphors, the song Elevator is another piece of lyrical poetry. We go up and we go down, 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 like an elevator. We touch the sky, then touch the ground, 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 like an elevator. You're stuck on one while I'm pressing three, then we end up on the fourth floor, and then we disagree. Then you keep on blaming me, but I wish that you would see that I'm just trying to elevate you, like an elevator. So deep. So beautiful. Now, so far, I've gone over songs on the standard edition of the album, but believe me when I tell you, that is not even scratching the surface of the complete Doll Domination package. There was a deluxe edition, an international edition, a reissue just one year later in North America, Doll Domination 2.0, Doll Domination 3.0, Doll Domination in Space, Doll Domination in the Hood, Doll Domination Goes West. I mean, damn, the title does not lie. This album was going for total world's domination. If we're including all the songs from every release of the album, I counted about 27. And if we're including the remix of Hush Hush, which is basically a different song from the original, that's 28 songs. That is... wow. That's about two albums worth of music rolled into one. A few factors contributed to this completely bloated track listing. First, Nicole Scherzinger had been in the process of recording a solo album called Her Name is Nicole from 2005 to 2007. However, the album was scrapped, and some of the songs, such as Who's Gonna Love You and Baby Love, were thrown onto Doll Domination. I will say, as much as I love this album, it does give the vibe of rejected songs from other albums, so this makes total sense to me. Secondly, the deluxe edition of the album featured solo songs from each of the group's five members. Hilariously, each song says introducing and the name of the doll who's singing it, as if it's the first time they've been let out of their cages to sing. The fact that Nicole's solo song, Until You Love You, also says introducing Nicole Scherzinger, like she wasn't essentially the only one singing the whole time, is so funny to me. But to be honest, the solo songs are some of the best on the album, with my particular favorites being Ashley Roberts' Played and Melody Thornton's Space. Both are chill R&B songs that might not sound exactly like the rest of the album, but they're great breather songs to slow things down a little bit. Thirdly, the many reissued editions included multiple bonus tracks. Notably, there was a bonus track with New Kids on the Block called Lights, Camera, Action, which I'm pretty sure is about making a sex tape. It was 2008 after all. Another bonus track was Top of the World, which was used in the MTV show The City and in the Disney Channel movie Frenemies. Does anyone remember this movie? I remember seeing ads for it but not watching it, but I probably would've if I had known the dolls were featured on the soundtrack. All in all, Doll Domination is a banger of an album. There is literally a song for every mood that you're in. Feeling confident? What you think about that? Feeling emotional? I'm done. Feeling angry? In person. Feeling sad? I hate this part. Feeling sexy? Bottle pop. I guess when there's nearly 30 songs on an album, there's bound to be one for every possible mood, but that's what keeps me coming back. I'm not exaggerating when I say this is in my top 5 favorite albums of all time, and even though it was obviously successful, I actually still feel like it's underrated. The deep cuts are just as good as the singles in my opinion, and even when they're not, they're still really fun. The album may be a cobbled together piece of late 2000s scraps, but I really see nothing wrong with that. Doll Domination is a chaotic ride from start to finish, and that's exactly why I think it works so well. Give it a listen if you're ever feeling nostalgic for this era of music.